okay so we were looking at the product measure so we have x s mu y t lambda sigma finite measure spaces then we have mu cross lambda is the measure defined on so q belonging to s cross t the product sigma algebra then this was defined as integral over uh, x of uh, lambda of qx d mu and this is equal to integral over y mu of qy d lambda okay so this is how we define the product measure and we saw that on r2 for instance m1 cross m2 is not complete and therefore m1 cross m2 is not what we would have assumed is uh, the measure so what is the relationship between the different uh, sigma algebras and the corresponding measures which we have on uh, higher dimensional spaces so we sketch the proof uh, argument below so we we'll say let l equals k plus n and then we consider rl as equal to rk cross rn then you have bl equals borel sets in rl bk equals borel sets in rk and bn equals borel sets in rn similarly you have ll equals lebesgue measurable sets in rl and then lk equals lebesgue measurable sets in rk and ln equals lebesgue measurable sets in rn okay so now given any open set in rl equals countable disjoint union of half open boxes we have seen this before any open set can be written as a countable disjoint union of half open boxes therefore all since boxes are obviously they are measurable rectangles <coughs> and therefore belong to lk cross ln and therefore open sets are also in a, a so open sets belong to lk cross ln and this implies that bl borel sets is contained in b uh, lk cross ln now if e is in rk lebesgue measurable that is e belongs to lk okay so now you can approximate e from above by a g delta set and from below by an f sigma set these are all the characterizations of uh, this thing now then this means that e cross rn is lebesgue measurable in rl why is that because you have uh, e cross rn will be what uh, if you take g delta set 
then that will be a countable union of open set. An open set cross Rn is again an open set, therefore it is Lebesgue measurable in Rl and therefore countable union of open sets is also Lebesgue measurable in Rl and then F sigma similarly for closed sets, intersection of closed sets etc. is Lebesgue measurable in Rn and these two uh, close in on E and Lebesgue measurable is a completion and therefore this implies that E cross Rn is a similarly F in LL, LN implies RK cross F belongs to LL. So the intersection, so this implies the intersection of these two which is E cross F belongs to LL. Okay. So this means that all measurable rectangles belong to LL and this implies that LK cross LL is contained in LL. Therefore, you have BL is contained in LK cross LL which is contained in LL. Now, ML and MK cross MN agree on boxes because it is uh, whatever definition you give the, because this is a measurable rectangles boxes are measurable rectangles. So, the uh, measure is just the product of the measures and then the same for the boxes in ML also. So, these agree on boxes and since every open set is a countable disjoint union of boxes therefore, agree on open sets. and therefore this agree on Borel sets. Because this is translation both are since both are translation invariant and finite on compact sets. Both these are very easy to check, okay. And therefore, they agree on open sets, they are the translation invariant finite on compact sets. Then we have shown that the, it is essentially the Lebesgue measure, which is the thing. So, ML is uh, on Borel sets, okay. So, they agree on Borel sets, okay. So, now if Q belongs to LK cross LN, okay, then This implies Q belongs to LL, so it is Lebesgue measurable. So there exists P1, P2 in BL, Borel sets, such that ML of P2 minus P1 equal to 0 and P1 contained in Q contained in P2. Because again the proposition about Lebesgue measurability. Now, MK cross MN of Q minus P1 is less than or equal to MK cross MN of P2 minus P1. Okay. And this is Borel set and therefore that is equal to ML of P2 minus P1 and that is equal to 0. So that implies that MK cross MN of Q equals MK cross M MN of P1 which is ML of P1 which is equal to ML of Q and this implies that MK cross ML and ML agree on LK cross LN as well. 
and therefore this implies that LL is the so you not LL ML is the completion of MK cross ML. So the Lebesgue measure in uh, in a product space is the completion of the product of the Lebesgue measures which from any of the subspaces which you want to do. So this is the relationship and we also have that BK, BL is contained in LK cross LN cross LL. We have this relation LN here sorry and we have this relationship here and therefore it works. Okay, so now we are going to prove one of the most important theorems again in the uh, course. So this is called Fubini's theorem which talks about integrability on the product space. So theorem Fubini x s mu y t lambda sigma finite measure spaces. F an extended real valued function defined on x cross y and which is s cross t measurable. It better be measurable in the product otherwise we are not talking about it. Okay, so A let f be non-negative define for x in x and y in y phi x equals integral over y fx d lambda and psi y equals integral over x fy d mu. Remember these are the sections. So this is a function of y and this fy is a function of x and therefore you can integrate it on these spaces. Okay. Then phi is s measurable, psi is t measurable and integral over phi d mu over x is equal to integral f d mu cross lambda over x cross y and that is equal to integral over y of psi d lambda. So this is the important conclusion of Fubini's theorem. So B, let phi star of x equals integral over y mod f section x d lambda. If phi star is s integ integrable, or rather integrable over x then f is integrable over x cross y with respect to the measure mu cross lambda and for almost every x in x and almost every y in y fx is s measurable uh, sorry t measurable fy is s measurable 
and star holes. C F integrable over x cross y with respect to mu cross lambda then oh, okay okay I should, that should be stated here. Okay, then for almost every x in x, almost every y in y, fx is t measurable f y is s measurable both are integrable over the respective spaces with respect to the respective measures and star holes. Okay, so let us look at this theorem a bit. So first one says that if you have a non-negative function, then you have just do, don't worry about anything, star is true. All of them may be infinity, that is possible, but they are, if one is infinity, everything is infinity. One is finite, all the three are finite and they have to be equal, that is the first thing. So, for non-negative functions, no worries. The second one tells you a condition when the function is integrable over the uh, product space. So, if you take mod f and its x section and y and if that is integrable over x, then the original function is integrable over. Them. Similarly, it is enough to check. You can also do it for y. You can take the mod f super y. If that is integrable over x uh, for x, and then uh, then also you can have the integrability. And once you have integrability of the function over the product space, then the first part it's as though like it's in the case of non-negative functions, namely the sections are all measurable and integrable and you can write the, uh, the general star formula which is the integral exactly. Okay, so let us give the proof of this. A. So, f sub x, f super y are non-negative and therefore phi psi are well defined. For non-negative functions, you always can define the integral. Now, by definition of product measure, star is exactly the conclusion of the previous theorem when f equals chi of q, q belongs to s cross t. Because this is exactly what we did. Because what was the conclusion? The integral of uh, lambda of qx d mu over x equals integral over y mu of qy uh, d lambda and that is equal to mu cross lambda of q which is nothing but integral over x cross y of chi q. 
So this is exactly the theorem which we proved. So we have proved it for uh, characteristic functions. Then this implies bilinearity for true for simple functions. So we are using the trick prove it for characterized function, prove it for simple functions, then use a limit theorem to prove it for any non-negative function. Okay. Now, f non-negative function uh, measurable in S cross t, then you have fn simple fn increases to f. Then phi n of x equals integral y fn x d lambda psi n of y equals integral over x fn y d mu. Okay. Then, because these are simple functions, you and these phi n increases to phi and psi n will increase to psi. And therefore, result follows from monotone convergence theory. Because you have that integral fn on x cross y fn d mu cross lambda equals integral psi n uh, d lambda over y equals integral phi n d mu over x and now you just have to pass to the limit and then you will get this. So, this proves A. B. So, apply A mod f. So, we get that integral x cross y mod f d mu cross lambda is equal to integral over x phi star d mu and that we know is finite and therefore, you have that f is integral c. So now you write f equals f plus minus f minus, then f integrable implies f plus integrable and greater equal to 0, f minus integrable and greater equal to 0. Then you define phi plus minus x is equal to integral y f plus minus x d lambda and psi plus minus y equals integral over x f plus minus uh, y d mu. Then what do you know? You know that integral f plus d mu cross lambda over x cross y this equal to integral uh, psi uh, plus uh, d lambda over y equals integral phi plus d mu over x and similarly integral over x phi minus d mu this equal to integral x cross y f minus d mu cross lambda equals integral y psi minus d lambda and all are finite, all finite because these things are integrable and therefore they are finite and therefore you can subtract and then you have uh, phi plus phi minus is exactly f plus uh, f minus. So, this, this will give you, this will imply star. Just subtract, you will get so. 
So the mark So as I said if f is non-negative all integrals in star could be finite infinite if even 1 is finite all are finite and equal. Then B can also be stated let psi star y equals integral mod f y d mu uh, integrable on y then f is integrable on x cross okay so it you can check any one of them three So what is star? Star can be written as in expanded form integral f d mu cross lambda over x cross y equals integral over x integral over y f of x y d lambda y d mu x equals integral over y integral x f of x y d mu x d lambda y. The first integral will give you the phi or the psi definition and then the next integral will give you the integral phi or the integral psi definition. Okay, so this is uh, uh, how you expand. So essentially, what we are doing, we used to do in double integrals in our Riemann integral, Riemann integration. Namely, the order of integration is unimportant. That is what it says, and that is true if f is integrable on the product space. That is Fubini's theorem. Okay, so we will see several examples of this uh, in the subsequent lectures.